my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are in the process of solving problems dealing with the notion of division of decimals. And today is our lesson number 15. Before we get going with these problems, problem number one is what we're going to do. Example, example number one on page number 12. Page number 12. Example number one, which is 34 divided by 2.5. Before we get going on these problems, there are three examples that you see there on page number 11, uh, page number 12 and 13, and then there are 10 practice problems. If you feel that that's not enough, and if you want, if you feel that you need more help, you need more practice, which is always a good idea in my opinion, to practice a few more problems, because 10 problems is just not enough there. If you wish that you need more help and more practice, as I said, there are some videos here that you can watch, which deal with the same concept. The math on the T's and the HESI's is not much different. There, it's, it's of the same caliber, same difficulty, same level. Just type in T's math day 8 or day 9 and watch those two videos and you will get some more practice. In addition to that, there is always this series here, basic math. In, in basic math day 1 through 100, not 200, but 1 through 100, you will find several topics that will come in quite handy in the exam. Particularly day number 54, 55 and 56. On those three days we did several problems dealing with the notion of division of decimals. How to divide one decimal by another without actually doing the division. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly what I said, without actually doing the division. You heard me right. Let's get going. For example here, 34 divided by 2.5. Well, 2.5. 34, 34 of course is very straightforward. 34 can be written as 34 over 1. No big deal there. And 2.5, I hope that you're able to see, can be written as 25 over 10. If you were to divide 25 by 10, if you were to divide 25 by 10, what will end up with is 2.5. So that's what this is. This is the exact same quantity as that. Another thing that we learn in these videos in 54, 55, 56, and 8 and 9, which I'm not going to repeat everything here, another thing that we learn is that when we have to when we have to divide one fraction by another fraction, what we do is we take the first fraction. We take the first fraction and we multiply it, instead of a division sign, we multiply, the division becomes multiplication. We multiply it by the reciprocal, by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So 25 over 10 becomes 10 over 25. Are you with me so far? And if you want to understand the reason behind it, the reasoning behind it, the logic behind it, as I said, watch the videos and you will learn it there. I'm not going to repeat everything here. That's it, we're almost done. Now, now, we, are, now we are ready to start uh, reducing things. We see 10 on the top, we see 25 on the bottom, they have a common factor of 5, let's divide top and bottom by 5. If you divide 10 by 5, we get 2, if you divide 25 by 5, we get 5. Is there anything else that we can do here? 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. When we approach a prime number at the bottom, there's not much we can do. Because, uh, uh, well, that by itself, 5 here, that, I, that's not what I meant to say, just because it's a prime number at the bottom, it, that's not the end of the story. What I meant to say is that this is a prime number, that's the prime number, and 34, 34 does not have any factor of 5. 35 is not a factor of, doesn't have a factor of 5. 35, 34 is not a multiple of 5. 35 would have been a multiple of 5. So that's it, that's where the story ends. So we now at this point we just multiply 34 by 20, 34 times 2, 34 times 2 over 5, and 32 times 2, 34 times 2 is going to be 68 over 5. And we just reduce it further. Let's see what happens. We divide top by 5, top, top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 6 have? 6 has only one 5. 6 has only one 5. The remaining one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. The remaining one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. 18 has 3 5s. 3 5s are 15. 18 has 3 5s. 3 5s are 15. So out of 18 we use the 15, we have a remainder of 3. We have a remainder of 3 and that remainder of 3 needs to be divided by 5 because we are dividing everything by 5. That's your answer, 13 and 3 fifths. 13 and 3 fifths is our final answer and that can be written as 0.6. 3 fifths equals 0.6. And all of these things that, we, that I'm talking about here, as I said, I'm not going to take the time as I keep repeating, is there in the basic math. These things you should know. You should know your fifth, you should know your tenths, you should know your quarters, you should know your uh, eighths. 
and a third. And they're all there. If you watch the series of T's Mad, there are 60 videos, or rather 80 videos. They are all, pro uh, all labeled properly. Look for the videos which deal with the tenths and the, and the fifths. And you will understand that 3 fifth is 0.6, which is very straightforward also. If you have 3 fifth, 3 fifth, 3 fifth, if you were to multiply top and bottom by 2, if you multiply top and bottom by 2, we're not changing anything because 2 over 2 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6, and 5 times 2 is 10, so it's 6 over 10, and of course 6 over 10 is 0.6. Let's do the next, next one, shall we? Perhaps I explained too much. Example number 2. If you explain too much, we're just beating the dead horse, you understand? 2.468 divided by 0.2. Again, the idea is to understand how to write our decimals that are given us in fractions using whole numbers. So let's do it here. We're going to do them individually, just so we understand it properly, and then we're going to put them together. Let's look at this one first here, this quantity. 2.468. 4, 6, 8. I hope that you're able to see that if you want to multiply it by a thousand, if you want to multiply it by a thousand, this will become a whole number because the decimal is here. If you multiply it by a thousand, thousand is three zeros. One, two, three, it has three zeros. The decimal is right here. If you multiply it by a thousand, the decimal is going to end up at one, two, three. It's going to end up here. And it's going to become four thousand, it becomes, it's going to become 2,468. We can't just leave it like that. If you can multiply the top by a thousand, we must multiply the bottom by a thousand. Bottom was, right now it was this amount. It was 2.468 over 1. 2.46 over 1 has to be multiplied by a thousand over a thousand. A thousand over a thousand is 1. We haven't changed anything. So by doing so, it becomes 2,468. 2,468 and then 1 times a thousand is just a thousand. You with me? Similarly, 0.2 can be written as 2 over 10. 0.2 can be written as 2 over 10. So let's begin our process. So this can be written as uh, 2468 over 1000 divided by 2 over 10. 2 over 10. And now we are going to rewrite our thing here, 2468 over 1000 and then times the reciprocal of this thing, which is 10 over 2. Are you still with me in the story? Very good. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, this 10 is going to disappear and 1000 is going to lose one of its zero. 1000 becomes 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 has 1 2, 4 has 2 2, 6 has 3 2's, and 8 has 4 4 2's. In other words, 2468 divided by 2 is simply 1234. Now since we divided the top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. That was the whole idea, to get rid of this 2. That's it, it's gone, it's 1 now. You could write 1 here if you wanted to, but it really doesn't serve any purpose. It's 1 over there. That's it, we're done. It's just 1,234, 1,234 divided by 100. And since we are dividing it by 100, we just have to take our decimal, which is right here. The decimal point is right here. Since we are dividing it by 100, we're just going to have to move our decimal two spots. One, two is going to end up here. So the final answer is 12 point. The final answer is going to be 12.34. 12.34. That's it. Let's do one more, shall we? Number three. Number 3. We are no longer on page number 12, now we are on page number 13. Example number 3. Example number 3 asking us to do divide 0.894 by 0 0.05. Again, we're not going to take the time to explain the same process again. It's the same exact logic, same exact process. Nothing has changed. Before we had 2.468. If three decimal places, we divide it up and by 1,000 to make it a whole number. Same thing is going to happen here. If you multiply 0 0.894 top and by 1,000, it becomes 894. You see? 0.894 times 1,000. And this is over 1. So we divide top and bottom by, and we multiply top and bottom by a thousand, point nine four, point, point eight nine four times a thousand is just 894, 894 over a thousand. So this is just 894 over a thousand, and this is going to be divided by 
5 over 100. 5 over 100. Instead of rewriting, well, let's just let's do it properly. Step. I was going. I was going to be lazy. I was going to raise this thing and put it ten over. Ten, 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 ten. I was going to erase this thing and turn it into a multiplication sign and erase rewrite hundred over five because I was too lazy to rewrite this part. But let's not be lazy. Thousand times the reciprocal of this thing is easier to see. You see. If you erase it, then it's gone. So you can't see it. We just take the reciprocal of this thing. Instead of five over one hundred, it becomes hundred over five. We see hundred on the bottom. We see. We see 100 on the top, we see 1000 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 100. If you divide top and bottom by 100, 100 is going to go away and this 1000 is going to lose 2 of its 0. Okay, this is where, this is where gonna, things are going to get, this is where things are going to get prickly, so pay attention. This is where things are going to get tricky. So what we have at this point is 894 over 10 times 5. Now as you can see, if you were to tackle this thing by itself, it's not, it's not that difficult, but it is, it is a help because 894 is not a multiple of 5. We could divide top and bottom by 2, but what's going to happen next? We could divide top and bottom by 2. Let's do, let's do it. I'm going to show you two methods, okay? Let's, let's do it. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. I'm going to show you two different ways to pick up from here. We're going to pick up our story from here in two different ways. Let's do the first method, okay? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Watch, watch what happens. If we divide 8 by 2, 8 has 4 2's. 8 has 4 2's. How many twos does nine have? Nine has four twos. And the remaining one goes and joins the four and become fourteen. And fourteen has seven twos. Fourteen has seven twos. Now since we're dividing, actually this is not going to get us anywhere. This is not going to get us. This is the dead end. I'll tell you just, I, I'll tell you what happened in a second. I'll tell you in one second exactly what happened. Because my, my logic, my thinking was wrong. I just caught myself, but since we since we dug ourselves a hole. We have to get out of it. And I'm telling you right now, this is a dead end. I should have stuck with the original method that I had in mind. 447, now since we divided the top by 2, we have to divide the bottom by 2. If we divide 10 by 2, what I thought was, in my haste, what I thought was 10 divided by 2 is 2. Keep listening. Which is not. 10 divided by 2 is not 2. But that's what I thought in my mind a second ago. In which case we, we would have in which case we would have ended up with it's a hypothetical step in now it's not the case here in which case we would have ended up with two times five and what I was saying to myself is that at that point it doesn't matter what we on the top we can divide any number by ten by simply moving the decimal but that, alas alas that is not the case ten divided by two is not ten divided by two is not two it is five so again we are at the dead end it's four hundred forty seven divided by twenty five it's not getting us anywhere. We're wasting time. It's, this, this is a dead end. Instead of, instead of erasing everything, I'm going to leave it like this. So you can see that it's a dead end. It's not getting us anywhere. Let me show you, let me show you a quicker method. So what we had was this. We had 894, 894 divided by 10 times 5. 10 times 5. Now, if you see a 10 in the bottom, if you see a 100 in the bottom, if you see a 1000 in the bottom, those are good numbers to have. Those are good numbers to have when you're dealing with fraction because it's very easy to divide any quantity by a 10 or a 100 or a 1000, any multiple of 10. We don't have 10 here, we don't have a 100, we have a bloody 50. Let's convert that 50 into a 100, shall we? If we can have a 100 at the bottom, the rest we can tackle very easily. So how do we convert the bottom into a 100? We multiply it by 2. Multiply it by 2. So now 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10 and 10 times 10 is 100. If you multiply bottom by 2, we must multiply the top by 2. And what do we end up here? 894 times 2, let's do it here. 894 times 2 is very easy to figure out. It's 8. 9 twos are 18. 8, carry 1. 8 is a 16 plus 1 is 17. So what we end up is 1788. What, what happens? We end up with 1788 over what? Over 100. 10 times 10. Over 100. That's it. We are done. It's very easy now to figure out what the answer is. It's just going to be, we're simply going to take our decimal which is sitting right here and move it two places. It's just going to be 17.88. 17.88. That was a dead end. I wasn't thinking straight. For some reason I thought that we were going to get the 10 at the bottom. We're not getting 10 at the bottom. We're getting 25 at the bottom. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.